Well, greetings and welcome back, fellow audio enthusiasts. It is I, Jason, your host of Two Channel Listening. Yes, it is that time again. We have the Peachtree Karina Integrated Amplifier. Now, this review is made thanks to my friends at the Music Room in Erie, Colorado. They are an authorized Peachtree dealer. And it is from them where I bought the Peachtree GAN 400 and pre-DAC, pre-amplifier combination from them. As well as a couple years ago, I bought the Nova 150 from them. So they are definitely uh, supporters of Peachtree. And take it away, Duncan. The Music Room is the world's leader in used hi-fi audio and a dealer for many of the best brands in the business. We've heard it all and we know what works. All right, everybody, there's a lot to unbox here and I need to just jump right into it. So the Peachtree Integrated Amplifier being named Karina and not following the Nova nomenclature. Well, I have a feeling there's a few reasons for that. Specifically, I had a good interview with Mr. Andrew Clark from Peachtree there are some very specific omissions on this integrated amplifier that I had to reach out to Peachtree and get a, under, a better understanding of why the left turn with this specific unit. So, you know, I'm paraphrasing here in saying that the Peachtree integrated amplifier, Karina, the latest generation of their integrated amplifiers, is targeting that just add speakers classification and truly this is a a kind of a in some ways a big step for peach tree as you can see this antenna right here so what you've got is an n-core based amplification that's right the novas was uh bauer you know b and o ice modules the those ice modules are gone peach tree decided to go with the n-core type of amplifiers, much like what's in a lot of the NAD products. I don't think that's by accident. I asked Andrew specifically, what's going on there? Why not just use what you already know that you have? Uh, with critical acclaim, everybody loves the, the GAN 400 ampl amplifier, so why not get a smaller version of that for Karina? Basically, Andrew said that $2,500, that was the goal. That is what the price point they had to hit with Karina. And therefore, in order to put uh, the GANFET technology in Karina, that would have that would have cost another $1,000, or they would have to have retailed it for $3,500 instead of $2,500. And it doesn't stop there because there are some additions and there are some major subtractions. With this 300 watt at 8 ohms or a max dynamic power of 530 watts at 4 ohms, the Peach Tree is a digital product. This is really a much uh, a bigger leap forward in being a all digital product. And I can say that with confidence because when I look at the back here, there's no phono inputs. And Boy, did Peachtree rattle a lot of cages by omitting the phono input. Uh, they All their integrators have always had, had the phono source, at least for the moving magnet, and that was kind of a big deal. Another thing I noticed that kind of actually irritated me is that it also doesn't have pre-inputs. So I can't use the pre-outs from my Hi-Fi Rose RS250. This only accepts digital inputs. You've got two digital coax inputs. You have your USB, you've got your optical, and you also are going to have, which is another new one for Peachtree, is the I2S. I don't use HDMI, I don't use these for HDMI. It seems like that's another kind of, um, that's trying to put them on a level playing field more so with NAD if you ask me. And, you know, for those of you who want to use I2S, you now have it in a Peachtree product. Obviously, you see this big butt antenna here sticking out the Peachtree. This is a Bluetooth DAC, 
It does not rely on anything from Blue Sound or Blue OS um, operating system, except it is made to partner with the Blue Sound Node 2i or a Vault. As a matter of fact, they put a specific pairing button on their remote so that you could use the Peachtree remote to toggle around if you add a Blue, a, um, Blue Sound node with your Karina. So, you know, that was kind of interesting. And actually, during my playback, since I have an NAD M10, the, that button actually turned the M10 on and I was actually able to toggle around with the M10. So that was kind of interesting uh, thing to stumble on by having some NAD products here with the Karina. You will also notice that we have an OLED display. This is the first time that Peachtree actually has a digital readout. There's a reason behind that. This has the new Sabre chip. So this has the ES9068 Sabre chips. There's two of them in here. No longer are they using the 915 or the 918s. No longer they didn't use the 928s. They went straight for that newer kind of oddball 9068 because that gives them the ability to uh, have MQA on all of the digital inputs. So now Peachtree also has an MQA compliant integrated amplifier. Again, I'm paraphrasing. This is an integrated amplifier, a just add speakers amplifier that is going straight at the heart of the of the NAD M10 V2, or with a little bit more of a stretch, the name Unity Atom. If you add a node to, uh, 2i to this, well, then you're right, you're actually in the middle of the price points of those two products. So, what else is different? Well, what isn't different is you have the sleek peach tree chassis. It remains that kind of 8 tenths chassis which is the same chassis as the, the separates. It's 14 inches wide instead of the typical 17 inch rack mount. And at the binding post back here, it is only 13 inches deep. So the chassis stay nice and svelte. And you know, that's what's always appealed to me is the, the classic peach tree trim, how lovely they look, the art deco to it, the brushed face plate, it just, Unlike the NAD products, it has a class, you know, it has a classy look to it. And then you have this nice venting under and, and above. Okay, more is different. So when you actually push in this, when you actually push in the input selector, it's gonna bring up this screen so that you can navigate. And because of that particular 9068 Sabre chip, you have three digital filters to be able to tailor this, slightly tailor the sound of how you want your roll off with the, with the DAC. There is a very specific reason why I decided to release the sound demo before I did the review because I didn't want to taint anything. I didn't want to create any biases in your listening to that demo when it comes to the three filters that Peachtree is very proud of. They're also very proud of the fact that you have a hybrid digital volume control. So most Sabre chips have volume already built into, the, into those chips. They just have to be able to engineer it within the preamp board. Well, they went a little bit further with Karina and they actually have a resistor ladder hybrid DAC that you can select through the menu to turn that on and turn the digital volume off to give it a little bit more of an analog flavor and basically that disassociates the digital signal from the rest of the digital inputs. I'm gonna play a quick little video for you here. So when I was playing with the hybrid, hybrid volume, I'm just gonna let you listen to the sound it makes when you're toggling up and down.
All right. I know you can clearly hear those magnetic clicks. I don't know, guys. I love you, but I don't know what you're, you know, I don't know what's going on there. That just, that got annoying to me, and I went back to your regular digital volume, and I have to say that something with those clicks and how loud they were, it made it harder for me to focus on was I really hearing a difference between tracks and line leveling because you have silent operation you can clearly you can clearly focus on the music when you're line leveling the volume but as i had to make incremental changes with that hybrid volume and those clicks come in it's like it just it 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 scrambles my brain and i can't focus on well am i hearing anything different get rid of that in the next product me as a as a main buyer for your stuff i'm just telling you from a consumer perspective i don't want to use i don't want to use that specifically for those clicks that just get rid of them all right another caveat i should have said this from the very beginning to those of you who are new to my channel those of you who know how i operate I do not get any advertising money. I do not get, you know, free merchandise. I do not get paid commissions. I'm not paid commissions from the music channel with doing these in-home auditions. I specifically bring in products that I'm interested in from a personal level. Either I'm going to love them, most of the time I've already bought them and I'm going to review them, or I'm demoing them because I'm interested in buying them for a specific purpose, another room, or my main room. And in this case, because I've, I've owned so many peach trees and I was really curious of how close this would get to the separates, of course, I wanted to hear what this new, this new Karina had to offer, especially since I happen to have the NAD M10 on and I have very strong feelings about the NAD M10 amplifier. All right, did I miss anything when it comes to the digital interface? Ah, yes, the Bluetooth. So, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be kind of a, a dick for a while. I'm glad it happened during the playback when I made the sound demo video for you all. There's no Ethernet port back here. Again, if you want streaming, you either use Bluetooth for your phone, pairing it. I use Tidal. I had no problems pairing this and using and streaming Tidal directly to Karina. To, you know, to their kudos, I had zero dropouts. I had zero latency. And it worked perfectly fine in all five weeks of just specifically focusing on the Karina. However, I hate using and relying specifically on Bluetooth because no matter how many times I turn everything off, there is always an email, an alert, or something that plays through my speakers. And sure enough, the last track when I'm playing, when I was making the demo video for you, the sound clips, I had an email come through on my iPad. I forgot to turn off all those notifications. And that is why I want an Ethernet port or a full-on Wi-Fi Direct Connect so that I don't have crap coming through my speakers. That is really annoying. Okay. All right. All right. Off of that tirade. Here's how I used it. And here's how I compared it with the NAD M10. Obviously, I couldn't use the pre-outs from my Rose Hi-Fi, so I went only directly digital from the Rose Hi-Fi to the digital coax input of both the M10 and Karina, as well as use them as advertised, just add speakers. So I was able to get the Karina in in time to give it another week with the um, VA Baby Grand Beethovens. And I was happy that I got to spend a week with the Vienna Acoustic Speakers using the Karina because those Vienna Acoustic, spe ah, those Vienna Acoustic Speakers, those are 2.5 ohm dip speakers. Actually, Stereophile had them dipping down to 2.3 ohms, which is kind of the territory where this amp 
uh, where the end cores don't like to go beyond 2.5 ohms. So, side by side, playing at least five different speakers with the Karina and six or seven speakers, I actually have a chart that I'll make for you on all the different speakers that I connected to the NAD M10. This is where it gets interesting. So, the NAD M10 is an N core derived integrated amplifier. It has the smaller N core, so it is only good for 100 watts at 8 ohms with a dynamic max range of 300 watts at 4 ohms. Sounds like should have plenty of power, correct? That was not my experience with the M10 the entire time that I had it. And we all know that de to depending on how Depending on how albums are made in the studios, there is a wide range. There is a wide difference between the dynamic range, and you know whoever the, you know whoever is using the loudness button versus not using the loudness button. Case in point, when I played Nils Lofgren, and I played his drum and bass intro track. In this smaller room, I would actually have to go all the way to 85 to 88% of the volume usage on the M10 to get to about 93 dB in my room. That is using up a lot of the M10's power and I can tell you that it doesn't like it when you're using that much of the headroom with that particular amplifier. The Karina didn't sweat anything, didn't sweat any of these speakers, but I'm making a digression. Here's what's interesting about the N cores and the different DACs that's within the M10 and the Carina. If you use these at modest to lower levels, say 80 dB, 80 SPLs in a room, connected to the Rose Hi-Fi to the digital inputs of both amplifiers, I will easily admit that I guarantee I would probably fail a blind A-B test of both amplifiers at that listening level. When you're at 80 dB or less across the different speakers that I had with the Rose Hi-Fi feeding them and you're basically listening to their internal DAC and the Encore amps, I really could not make any any note, I could not make any note or any difference between these two amplifiers at that listening level. They're just, they're just both spot on. You've got the N cores and you know, they're not the highest end DAC. So it's just the Rose Hi-Fi leveled the playing field and you really are listening to the N cores at that point. And I, I really, you know, I couldn't hear a difference between them, you know, the M, the M10 is a $3,000 amplifier with blue sound in integrated into it and Karina is a $2,500 integrated with just a Bluetooth. Well, here's where the pedal meets the road. Once you start pumping up the volume, and this happened across all speakers, once you start getting to 85 dB in room, this is where Karina really starts to shine and leave the NAD for flat. With the Vienna acoustics, those those Beethoven baby grands and that, you know, big dip and the really large crossover board with, you know, complex three-way design. I was able to crank some serious tool in here and I was surprised at how loud I could listen to Karina for how long I could listen to Karina above 90 dB in my room. I, I have not said this yet, but... When it came, comes to the M10, the NAD M10, I could not use the NAM, I could not use the NAD M10 for any length of time when I was reviewing the Aperion Audio Novus N6T speakers, when I was reviewing the Canton Chrono 90 speakers, when I would connect that and I'd start to listen to above 80, 83 to 85 dB. I would get fatigued really quickly with those combinations. There just wasn't any synergy. And the NAD would have this ability to just tighten up, get hard, and go way too cool to the cool side. And I mean blue cool to almost ice cold 
with how it would sound with those types of speakers. The exception to that rule was my Harbeth Compact 7s. There was some good synergy with the Harbeth Compact 7s and being that they are so lush and so focused on mid-range, the little bit of that extra tightness and energy that, the, that comes from the M10 actually gave a little bit of liveliness to the Harbeth Compact 7s and that was a very good pairing and I could actually turn the wick up with the M10 on the Harbeths. I can't say that about any of the speakers that I've had, not the other Aperions, not the Hecos, not the monitor audios. I just am not feeling it for what, for, I don't know if it's the lack of power, the lack of headroom or whatever it is. Once I go above, once I start going above 83 dB with the M10, it loses me and I can't listen to it for very long. That was not the challenge whatsoever with Karina. The extra headroom that it has, maybe it's also a part of that new, that new dual DAC chip system that they are using in here. It is a very impressive Bluetooth amplifier for $2,500. However, I have the big boys. I have their bigger siblings here. So how does it compare to not just, I can't say $3,500 because I have the Rose RS250 connected, you're talking about a $6,000 stack new retail. So how does $2,500 compare against $6,000? All right, this is the reality. The reality is it's very close. It's too close for comfort for me when it comes to that return on investment. And that was another reason why I was so curious about having the Karina in my room with all the different kinds of speakers that I have. I am paying essentially $2,500 more to have a legitimate 10%, not even, I can't even say 15%, to have a legitimate 10% more layering within the mid-range. So the, the difference is, is that the big combination, the peach tree combination, it does play wider. It fills completely from wall to wall. And there's more information in between the walls with a little bit of extra layering that the, that the separates combination can pull from each of the tracks. And then I would say that where, where the GAM 400 and the pre-DAC also will best the Karina is just in the fact that no matter what, these always stay closer to neutral. So they always stay closer to that, that nice sunny kind of yellow warmth spot. Whereas when push does come to shove, Karina can show that it's a, that it has a little bit more of a blueness. It gets a little bit a little bit more concise and cold, a little more analytical versus the peach tree the peach tree separates. Now that coldness isn't to say that it's sharp like the M10. It's just that it's not as it's not as natural sounding. It doesn't have this. It doesn't have the same level of warmth that I'm getting from the peach tree combination with the Rose Hi-Fi. So as a standalone, it's excellent. It works with all my speakers, but the return on investment is you're getting a little bit more neutrality. You're getting a little bit more effortlessness from the separates. They just, they can pull out a little bit more. There's more in the mid range and you're getting, you're getting a bit more effortlessness with your soundstage. And that, and that to me is, is important. When it comes to the three filters, I played around with them a little bit. And unfortunately for me, on some tracks, I would prefer this filter. On some tracks, I would prefer that filter. And at the end of the day, you know what? I don't want to set filters. I don't want to keep changing filters. I just want to enjoy my music. And I'm just going to say that you know, that extra tweaking functionality, that's not something that I'm looking for in any particular device. There's those out there who love that, that want to be able to turn on 
the resistor ladder volume and get the most out of the digital front end. They want to be able to tweak the filters and get a little bit more out of that, kind of like those matrix DACs, another product I hated. Um, I don't hate this, I'm just, you know, that was a product that had multiple different filters that to me, they were meaningless. And so to have those three filters with this DAC, it's kind of, it's kind of superfluous. It already sounds really good. And I don't want to have to remember, oh yeah, that track sounded better with the M, the M slow. Oh, that track sounded better with high fast or that track sounded better with, with low fast um, or L fast. I don't even know what the hell they meant by, you know, H and L. I'm just, anyway. <laughs> Documentation doesn't really discuss what you're supposed to expect other than the fact that it's the best sounding integrated amplifier Peachtree has ever put out yet. I've had some, I've had a lot of Peachtree products. I can say yes, that is true, but the king is still behind me and the king will stay here. Not to completely dogpile on NAD, you know I love reviewing NAD. I've bought so many NAD products. I like what NAD does, especially their return on investment. And I have to also give NAD kudos where they still hand Peachtree their shirt. And here's where they hand Peachtree their shirt. For $3,000, and there's other products that have the Blue OS in them, like the C399, you've got a complete package with that wonderful Blue OS operating system. And let me tell you, it is, it is a thing of beauty to take my Toshiba hard drive that has 37,800 songs on it, plug it right into the back of that M10. It does take about 10 minutes for it to load through all those, fil through, load all those files and to categorize them. But you know what, when the 10 minutes is up and done, I bring those files up, I have it on my iPad, I've got the Blue OS app open, and I'm just going from this song to this song to this song to this song. And even though there's 38,000 files on that particular Toshiba hard drive, Blue OS was entirely reliable, jumped to every single track, on the spot and I even tested it going from, okay, I'm in this on HD, but I'm gonna look at that file in title because I wanna see if there's more from that particular artist that I may like. So from that file to title, add to that, flip back to the hard drive, add the next song, man, it did not skip a beat. It was flawless and I was impressed, very impressed constantly with how good the Blue Sound products operate and the marriage that NAD has pulled off with Blue Sound versus Peachtree saying, yeah, go buy a node and it works with our remote. Okay, well, it's only $100 more than the M10 at that point and it has way more headroom and it can handle way more speakers and it does sound better than the M10. Okay, I got you there. Sure. Again, I would I still say the NAD, they have the user experience and they have the convenience knockdown flat. They are for me, I feel they're one of the most untouchable products out there when it comes to you buy it, you plug it in, and you can start playing whatever music you want across all the different platforms out there. It's just an impressive it's an impressive marriage that those two companies have brought together. Peachtree needs to do something and they need to step up their game and start offering some kind of blue, some kind of blue OS integration with their units if they really do want to compete with NED. I have already said you got the sound quality, but you know, for the dollars, yeah, you're beating the Unity, the name Unity for dollars in US. I know you UK folks can get the name Unity for far cheaper over there, and I would understand why it would be a flip, why you would flip what you would choose from your perspective. But over here, a name Unity Atom at $3,800, that's a non-starter for me. I'm not even interested in demonstrating that product in my room. 
Not, I, I, nope. Mm -mm. Lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. For those of you who have no problem using Bluetooth whatsoever, for those of you who are not bothered by other sounds emanating from your speakers at any given point during your music, you can save yourself $500 over the NAD M10 V2 and buy this bad boy. But you know what? If you want the flexibility, get the Node 2i and add it to the Carina. You're gonna have one heck of a killer combination that definitely is the better sounding unit versus NAD at this current time. I did ask Andrew what's, you know, what's on the plate. I did also kind of bug him. Okay, I see that you guys use the 9068 chip, but they also just came out with that, that big 9039 that's the next level pro DAC chip. Are you going to ever bring back the Grand X product line? That's when Peachtree really pulled out the stops and they made that beautiful integrated Grand X and the Grand Prix, and I owned the Grand Prix for a while, and I was really, really impressed with that product back then. It doesn't even compete with this today, I could tell you that. Nevertheless, you've got the separates, the top dog separates. It would be interesting to see Peachtree come back. Andrew, give us the GANs, give us the GANFETs. I understand it's $1,000 more, Give us that higher level DAC, and you know what? If you make a kick butt integrated amplifier at forty-five hundred dollars, well, that's still gonna that's still gonna undercut the M thirty-three by a lot. So, what are you guys waiting for? Do it. You know you got buyers out there, but you need to bring the phono input back for those guys because I know those guys are pissed. Nevertheless, thank you for joining me. I know I skipped around a bit with this one because there was just, it was all in my head. I needed to get it out as I could, as I could say it. And this to me is an almost product from Peachtree that to me there was, this is, I get where they're going with the just add speakers. But for me, I feel like they hit a speed bump and they need to go back to the drawing board. And even if it's $500 more, there's more they could do here. People will buy it if you build it right and you add the features that they really are asking for. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people want three different digital filters. I didn't know. I haven't. All right. You guys are cool. Thank you, Andrew, for your time. Thank you for allowing me to have 30 minutes of your time. Obviously, I support your brand, and I'm going to challenge you to make the appropriate changes with the next iteration. Or you could just say, screw that guy. What's he talking about? And do what you're going to do anyway. <laughs> I'd probably be that guy. <laughs>